loving and gracious God, we come before you to hear your word. We come before you to be changed, to be transformed, to be today somehow made more whole, to receive something that will soothe us or challenge us or give us more direction. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. For about 10 years, I served as the chaplain of the fire department in Port Jefferson, New York. It was an amazing experience. I was fortunate enough to go with the fire department to training in Yap Hank on Long Island. And so they suited me up. They gave me a hat and a jacket, pants, rubber boots, gloves, and we drove out to Yap Hank. There I was given an oxygen mask because we were going into the smokehouse, aptly named because they had filled this concrete building with black smoke thick that had been burned oil from these oil drums cut in half. So there we were going into the smokehouse and our job was to search for people. They had actually put dolls in the smokehouse for us to find. It was so dark, we could barely see the person in front of us. And so the way it worked is when we went in, we were touching the person in front of us as we went along the perimeter. I had been in there for only a few minutes when my oxygen mask began to buzz. That meant I was running out of oxygen and I had to get out. It was only practice, but I came to a great appreciation for the firefighters and their protective gear. The Apostle Paul suits up his firefighters with truth and justice and peace and faith and hope. Paul wants this vulnerable new church, all of these vulnerable new churches, to know that they can be strong in the midst of a culture that does not understand them, that is sometimes hostile to them. He wants them to know that they have strength that God gives to them. And so he uses this image of a Roman soldier's armor. It's a metaphor. He flips the Roman army metaphor on its head as resistance literature taking war and making it into very strong peace. Now, the early Christians, of course, practice nonviolence. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. The war <laughs> that the early church is fighting is not against flesh and blood, but against these spiritual forces. And it's a little bit difficult for us to get our minds around that. But we can imagine intangible powers that are greater than us, than all of us together. Racism, hatred, greed. All of these are the wiles of the devil. And they are very real. I think about that smoke in the smokehouse that choked us and made it so difficult to see. So Paul says, put on this armor 
not of a Roman soldier, but the armor of God. Fasten it tight. Be sure it fits. Hold on to that shield. Now, to be sure, there are times when we must put on the full armor of God. Strong and defensive. And make it as impenetrable as we can make it. When we are fighting a disease that threatens our life, we need to have every defense we can get, every medical tool to fight for us. Police need bulletproof vests. When we are in a storm, we need shelter, a safe place with impenetrable armor to be safe. Still, this letter lives. Scripture lives. We no longer can only hear it to a tiny church 2,000 years ago because we read it today and we're no longer a tiny church vulnerable. There are some billion Christians throughout the world. So we have to read it in our present context. Is it possible that we can put on the armor too tight? Can we make ourselves overly defensive? If we put on the whole armor of God and fit it really strong and solid and tight, and we become totally defensive, might it stop being the armor of God? So let's take the belt of truth. We live in a nation where everyone is absolutely certain that they know the truth. The truth is that immigrants commit crimes and take jobs. Facts don't support this. not the truth. Many are certain that the truth about climate change has nothing to do with human activity. Science proves that wrong. Yet, might we need to loosen up that belt of truth so we can hear more than facts? But the truth of people's hurt and pain and anger and fear, particularly those whose life experiences are different from our own. Are we courageous enough to share our stories when we might be ridiculed or worse? Being vulnerable opens us to ridicule and misunderstanding and the flaming arrows of the devil. It also opens us to the possibility of relationship and connection. When have you experienced this? When have you told your story and risked a new relationship? Fact never changed anyone's mind. The breastplate of righteousness. Is it possible to become too self-righteous? <laughs> Just go on Facebook to see who gets condemned for not being committed enough to a certain cause. There is a purity if we question, we get condemned. The shoes of peace. We say, no justice, no peace. And that is true. Yet sometimes, peace starts with a ceasefire. It's not perfect. I spent part of the summer in Minnesota with my sister. I think maybe you guys know my sister. She's Holly. I'm Molly. 
my brothers Billy, had he been a girl, it would have been Holly Molly Polly. <laughs> we thank God every time we get together that he's a boy. So I was with my sister this summer, and we could have attacked each other for our religion and politics. We've done it before. But now we choose not to. We spent hours together making jewelry. And it was beautiful. We called a ceasefire long ago. Who in your life do you need to call a ceasefire? There is the shield of faith. Of course our faith will be vulnerable. That's how faith is. That's good. Because when faith hardens into unyielding absolute certainty, it's no longer faith. Remember the words of our reformed tradition. We are reformed and always reforming. The helmet of salvation. Now, salvation is an arcane and misunderstood word. Salvation is that for which we hope. This is a bit of an eschatological, eschatological letter, meaning it is looking towards the end times. It is looking for that day when all will be made whole. And it says God's salvation, God's wholeness, the kingdom where there is wholeness and justice and peace and love for all is coming. Hope. Hope. When you hear salvation, think of healing and wholeness and hope. When we wear that helmet of salvation, we can hope rather than despair. And finally, the sword of the word of God. This is the only piece of armor that might be used as a weapon, and certainly the word of God has been weaponized. Against just about everyone, except very privileged people who are mostly white and men. Yet listen to the Gospel of John. You know it by heart. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through the Word, and not one thing came into being without the Word. What had come into being in the Word was life. And that life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. As a father's only son. Jesus is the living word of God. Jesus is the living word of God. Jesus never weaponized the Bible. Jesus was all about love and healing. And the greatest commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So anytime that you hear someone claiming that they are speaking the word of God and there is any hate for any group of people, inside or outside the church, anywhere, 
That is not the word of God. The whole armor of God. So we go back to Paul's list, and I think that there might be something missing that I want to hear more of. And that is love. And as I have thought about this, and as I kept thinking, and well, the word of God is love, so there's love. And I started to think that it is the act of putting on that armor that is love. Isn't the risk of going up against cosmic forces of evil love? The firefighters did not train simply to put out flames. They trained to save lives. They risked their lives to save others. They suited up for the sake of love. May it be so for us as well. Amen.